Alrighty then, party people. So we finally have the full shifter for the Civic Type R the from Acuity. And so I figured today what we'd do is I would kind of go over it, show you what's so crazy about this shifter. I'm gonna do an install on it. Then we're gonna drive it around. I'm gonna get it broken in. And by the time that I get all this finished and published, hopefully I would have been running this for a couple of weeks or maybe a month. And then I can give you my full review of it at the end of the video. So I wanted to show this to you. So if you haven't seen my previous videos, I basically have Whoops. I've basically done a couple of different videos on different types of shifter upgrades that you could do for your 10th gen Civic or Civic Type R. In the first video, we essentially did the Poco shift knob, which reduces the height of the shifter, which in return reduces the throw of the shifter, strangely enough. Then we did shifter cable upgrades for the bushings. And I noticed a huge difference from just the cable bushings. I was like, wow. Didn't think such a small upgrade would make such a huge difference. In the second video regarding shifter upgrades, we did the stage two kit from Acuity. Essentially what stage two kit is for the Type R is it comes with solid base bushing, similar to these. They're not the same, but they go to your stock shifter. We also upgraded our rocker on the stock shifter, and then we upgraded the, the centering spring on the stock shifter. In that video, I kind of said, I felt like you get about 80% of that feel from the stage two kit from just the bushings alone. And I felt like 90% of the stage two kit fill came from the stage one one kit. And I went into all the details with the differences between the two kits. There is a difference in the Civic SI kit versus the Type R. If you went like with a stage two kit for the SI, you do get a short shifter adapter. For the Type R, you don't because it changes the angle of the shifter cable to a point that would add too much stress. So they don't make a short shifter adapter for the Type R. So your next best option is their full drop-in shifter unit and this thing is absolutely insane the biggest thing to know about this is it has four levels of adjustment number one right here in the front you can adjust how high or how low this goes and that will either increase or decrease the throw of the shift knob the second level of adjustment that you have is right here you have three different levels that are marked by these hash marks let me see if i can get up close on that right there you simply loosen this with a socket move it up or down and it tells you if you go down it decreases the gate spacing if you move it up it increases the gate spacing for a shifter that sits lower i know some people like a high shifter especially if they're track focused cars but i like the ability to just be able to swap it out now in order to install this you're going to need a few tools you know you're going to need some socket wrenches you're going to need some panel poppers and I'll put links down in the description where you can pick this up I'll also put links where you can get the torque wrench that I'm gonna be using that measures in inch pounds because you are gonna need that which I wanted to note this every single place on this shifter assembly is marked like it tells you right here for this when you when you loosen this bolt it tells you if you go this way you're gonna increase the throw if you go this way you're gonna decrease the throw it also marks everything out telling you what size hex bolt you're gonna use for that it also specifies the inch pounds torquing for every single bolt so for example on this one and it also it has it in Newton meters as well as inch pounds so 71 inch pounds here it's also gonna tell you like on here how many inch pounds and what size on every single part of this is very well made Oh, another surprise I have for you is I'm actually changing out the shift knob. Not because I don't like the Poco shift knob that came, that I have prior, but so it's going to be about 107 degrees here in Phoenix today and shifters will burn the crap out of your hand in the summertime. I didn't want to just get a regular insulated knob. Acuity does make insulated shift knobs, which are awesome. Unfortunately, they only come in like one color, I think is white. Well, I wanted one that had that metal look and also had hefty weight to it. And so I got something else that's different. I hope Acuity doesn't get mad, but I mean, nobody makes a, sh a, a shift knob like the one that we're gonna be installing today. And I bought it, I waited a few weeks for it to arrive because it had to be custom made. So we'll get into that. So let's go out to the garage real quick. Let's yank out the old shifter. And then we can put them side by side and we can do a little bit of compare and contrast on what the differences are on the entire shifter body. All right guys, so I'm not gonna do a install video because Acuity has an install video and you know they did such a great job with it that I don't wanna even try to do another one. But I wanted to show you a few key differences between the OEM shifter and the new upgraded shifter. Um, 
If you watched the previous videos, like I mentioned earlier, we did a few upgrades to the shifter, two of them being the rocker arm here from Acuity, and then we did the stronger centering spring. Interestingly enough, I noticed that the centering spring on this guy was a lot stronger than the even the upgraded centering spring on this one. And it looks like, because we can fit, looks like more coils in here. I don't know, to be honest with you, but it definitely feels like this one, I can barely do it, right? And then this one's like, ugh. So very interesting. The other thing that to note about this entire shifter assembly is this is made of plastic. This entire thing made out of plastic. This one's made out of, I believe, some steel as well as aluminum. Um, very interesting indeed. The cool thing about the install video that Acuity made is it's 100% easy to follow. They show you how to set everything set up, how to take apart the entire you know, center console area. The install is, it, it looks more difficult and it looks more scarier than it actually is. But I wanted to show that to you real quick. We're gonna get this installed, and then I'm gonna show you the new shift knob. I was gonna get just a standard insulated knob, but I found a, a shift knob that is a hybrid between a metal shift knob and an insulated knob. So I wanted to show that to you. So the shift knob that we're going to be installing today from a company called Raysang. And Raysang makes a bunch of different parts for cars, and they are very, very high quality. And the first thing that I noticed about this, it has a center core that's made out of metal, and then you have this outer core that can actually be changed with different shape outer cores. And that way you can kind of have it however you want. Whenever you're ordering it, uh, they have a whole list on, you know, this is called our shifter gate. It shows you, okay, if you have this kind of car, choose gate number three or gate number five. So you can look up whatever car you have and they will imprint the correct gear ordering that's on here. And you can also get the center part with multiple colors. I forgot the name of this color, but I'll make sure to put it on the screen for you in case you wanna order one that's just like this one. Now, I didn't order the other outer shell that goes to it. I might in the future just to see how it feels, but on the outside here, it has a Delrin cap and it is dead sexy indeed. The biggest difference I've noticed between this shift knob and the Poco shift knob, I believe the Poco shifter is around 105 uh, grams. I'll put it on the screen if I'm wrong. This one is about 470 grams. And just for reference, approximately 455 grams equals a pound. So this thing is literally four times as heavy, which is actually kind of interesting. A lot of people like to get weighted shift knobs because it helps them shift faster strangely enough. And before we install it, we need to take off the Poco shifter. If you still have your stock shifter on here, I will put a link to a video down in the description um, where I installed the Poco, but that will show you how you're supposed to uninstall the OEM shifter. But we're just gonna twist this off. Um, cool thing is we do have a new shift boot retainer that's for the Poco, but then we have a new shift boot retainer that goes to the race saying. Now, in order to change our shift boot retainer, we're gonna have to take this all apart again. I mean, I've taken this thing apart so many times, it's not even funny, but gotta get this apart so we can change our shift boot adapter. And those come off just like that. You're gonna take that off on both sides. Then we get that side off just like so. Now we're gonna use a Phillips head screwdriver. You got two of these screws that we need to remove right here. Make sure you don't lose these. All right, put these in your cup holder or something. Get one on this side here. Then we're gonna use our popper here. to Kind of get this off and lifted just like so. All right. Now this is gonna come off and underneath it, you're gonna have a few different cables that we have to unclip for the Civic Type R. There's two on the driver's side and one on the passenger's side. Uh, depending on your model of car or Civic, you're gonna have a different number of connectors. Then we're gonna flip our boot inside out, just like this. So regardless if you're gonna be removing your OEM retainer, or in this case, I'm removing the Poco retainer, you'll notice that there is a zip tie on the inside, and we're simply gonna snip that off. And there, you can see that I pulled it out. Now we're gonna take our new Racing shift boot retainer, and inside the packaging, the retainer is has a zip tie, and it also has the retainer. Now the retainer here, you're gonna notice some O-rings. These O-rings are gonna go down, or actually when you flip this up, they'll be facing up. And let me show you real fast. 
So you simply put it in, kind of like this. All right, you're just gonna pull it all the way around until you kind of get like up to, I like to pull it up until the retainer and the boot are pretty much flush with one another, is we're gonna put our zip tie on. And I like to put the zip tie as close to the top of it as possible, where, whereas in this orientation, it's gonna be the bottom. But that way, we get a nice clean line with the shift boot collar in the way that it fits across here. And before I really honker down on that zip tie, what I like to do is I poke it through the top to kind of just get a feel for how it's gonna look. And okay, cool. And with this hand right here, I'm just gonna hold pressure pushing that down so it's as close to it as possible and I can tighten this. Now what that does is it secures the zip tie to the very tip top of it. That way, we're good to go. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna snip it off the excess. Now, that's what we're left with right here. So now we can simply Rehook everything up. It's funny, these trim pieces go back into place a lot easier than they're removed. One thing to keep in mind is this shift boot collar does not come with the shifter itself. You do have to buy this separately. This one was about, I think, 10 or $15. They do have an upgraded one that looks all cool and stuff, and it says racing on it. And I think it's like 30 bucks or something like that. I don't remember the exact price. So there's multiple ones that you can get. But in the box with the shifter, you're gonna get this adapter piece, all right? And this adapter piece is selected when you're actually ordering it. Now in the instructions, they say to use some blue Loctite, but for the sake of the video, I'm not worried about any Loctite. But what you do is you simply get this going just like this, okay? Then we're gonna take a 15 millimeter wrench on the top of it here, and we're just gonna snug it down. I'm not worried about over tightening it or anything, but then you have this little uh, set screw right here, which is a four millimeter Allen, okay? And what that's gonna do is gonna control the orientation of our shifter. So what I, the way I do it is I screw this on. And I see where my shifter is. Um, right now, my orientation is pretty good, but I'm gonna back it out just a little bit because I wanna tighten it down a little bit more. And if I tighten it down too much in the orientation it's in, then it will be crooked when it's tight, if that makes any sense. So what I'm simply gonna do is I'm gonna back out this Allen, this Allen head, just a quarter turn there. Now I'm gonna re-tighten this down. Now I, I backed it out just a little bit too much. As you can see, this is not straight. So now I can redo it again. So it's really nice because regardless of what kind of car you have, you can totally tweak and adjust the way that the numbers face and everything. So, so now let's go for a drive and see how this thing actually feels and see what I think about it so far. Back up top. All right, guys, so I figured I would give you kind of my review of this Acuity Shifter. I've been driving on it now for over a month, and I probably put a little over six or 700 miles on the car since I've installed the shifter, and I think there's a lot of things that you should know about it in regards to the way it feels after you first install it versus how it feels after you actually get it broken in because there are some significant differences that I think you guys should be aware of. So number one, let's talk about the install process because, you know, like I mentioned earlier, I didn't do an install on this because Acuity has an amazing video on how to install it and I will link that down below. One thing I will say about that is because I have taken the shifter assembly apart so many times, you know, the first time we did a couple of, you know, shifter upgrades and then we did a little more shifter upgrades and then, you know, we did the stage one, stage two. So as of right now, we have the shifter cable bushings that are in the engine bay and then we have the full shifter unit. With the install, it definitely wasn't as bad as I anticipated. I actually felt like this install was easier than just doing a stage two upgrade because with the stage ones and stage two upgrades, upgrades that you do on it, you have to take your OEM shifter apart to install the parts. Whereas with this one, you simply just drop it in and just put it in and tighten everything down and go to town. Now let's talk about the settings. So I left all of the settings exactly as they were from the factory. So from the factory, you have different choices for your gate spacing and the uh, shifter throw, and you have different choices for the shifter height, all kinds of stuff. And I simply left all of that stock. I did make sure, however, to torque it all down to spec before I installed it because they're not torque from the factory. So make sure you do that. If you get this, make sure you torque everything down. Um, all 
the torque specs are right there on the side, like I mentioned earlier, and you should be okay. Now, if you are the kind of person that thinks you're gonna be tweaking it later, there is a way to reinstall your center console that will leave the sides of it exposed. Um, I will link to a video on that. I think Powen has that video. I didn't do that. I just left it as is and I figured if I didn't like it, I would just yank it all back out. We're gonna go over the first impressions of what it felt like after I first installed it. Then we're gonna go over you know, what it felt like after I actually got it broke in because there is about a three to 500 mile break in period with the shifter. All right, so I don't know how this camera angle looks, but I wanted to make sure we could get the shifter you know, in the shot. So far, the shifts are really stiff. And, you know, from what Acuity told me, there could be a two to 300 mile break-in period. And what that means is all the, all the grease and lube that you saw on the shifter has to get kind of broken in and absorbed into the metals. And they said it will slicken up a whole lot more. Um, as of right now though, very little play in first, very little in second, very little in third, very little in fourth, very, well, there's a little bit there in fifth, and there's a little bit more in sixth. And then in neutral, that centering spring is super stiff, so you can, it's almost like there's no play. The gears are a little bit stiff right now during the shifting, and I figured we'd do a zero to 60 pull here in a second, and we'll just see how it actually fares, just waiting for this truck to move, and we will do a zero to 60 pull. traction control off the way fully I'm gonna turn the AC off we're gonna reset this I'm gonna do it about a 2,000 to 2,500 uh, rpm launch somewhere in that range Six seconds for our very first pull is not too bad, uh, especially with the new shifter. My best time so far with this tune and these bolt-ons um, so far has been initial first impressions was that the shifter was very stiff and very awkward at the very beginning, almost annoyingly stiff. You know, prior to doing any shifter upgrades, you know, from the factory, I did have one problem with my shifter and that was going from fifth to sixth. I always found that I got locked out of sixth gear for some reason, or it just didn't want to go into six. And then, you know, I did the stage one and stage two upgrades, and although they really helped the shifter feel, they didn't really help it go into sixth gear anymore than usual. And then, you know, after I installed it and I was driving it around with its first impressions, that problem was still there, you know, for the first couple hundred miles. But some of the pros after the, of the first impressions are the engagement is way more solid. Um, there were times, you know, when I was first driving it that I really felt like I had to crank it hard to get it into third gear completely. And then, you know, a lot of gears were like that. And then the gate spacing is definitely a lot more narrow. There's definitely no play when it's in gear. I mean, you would really have to push it hard to get any play in it. It definitely inspired more confidence, even when it was stiff, because it made sure you got to push hard to make sure you're in gear. Now, the downside to that is it kind of slows you down when you have to push it that hard into it. And at first I was like, I don't know if I really like this. I like it, but there was something about it that just didn't feel right to me. Now, fast forward to 600 miles later. up on me with this car. 
I will say that. So I, I do find myself a lot, especially passing people like I did back there, where I'm like, oh crap, I'm already hitting red line. And I didn't even realize it. Even after 10 months of ownership, I still haven't gotten used to that lower red line from the eighth gen. I mean, right here in fifth gear, I have zero play. That's that's legit. And down here in fourth gear, zero play. Third gear, zero play. Second gear, zero play as well. Pretty much all the gears have zero play. Which is a good thing. that it came from from acuity so i could theoretically you know tighten those up a little bit but you know i'm not really that worried about it it's shorter than it is stock yet it's not too short sometimes your shifts can be too short and you're just like wait what's going on here so i might try it later at a shorter setting but as of right now i'm completely happy and this new shift knob you know it's a hundred it's been a hundred to 109 degrees outside every day and you know with this delrin cap on it i have no complaints it never burns my hand and i can shift the moment i get in my car if i leave it out in the sun stiff um, you know they were absolutely right from the factory it definitely has a break-in period now shifts are effortless there's almost like this positive click when it goes into gear but I don't know I no longer feel like it's annoyingly stiff there's still no play in any of the gears like I said if you want any play you can really push it to get play but that centering spring is so strong that you there's virtually no play in any of the gears surprisingly though after it got broken in my fifth to sixth gear lockout is no longer there i don't ever feel like i have a problem going from fifth to six whereas before sometimes i try to go fifth to six and i go fifth to fourth that is definitely alleviated but it wasn't until about four or five hundred miles and since it's been broken in it's definitely a heck of a lot smoother in fact it's so smooth and it's so buttery right now i barely feel like i have an aftermarket shifter not that it feels the same as stock but it no longer feels like i've done something to the car it just feels like it is a more pristine version of the stock car whereas 
Prior to the break-in, it definitely felt like something had been done to the car. If that makes any sense, I don't know. Now that we've talked about, you know, what it's like initial impressions install and what it's like after the break-in period, let's kind of talk about some of the competition. Right now, its only competition is the hybrid racing shifter, which is a, essentially, it's kind of like the same shifter. There are some differences to it, which I'm not gonna go into because I don't have one. You know, and so I can't really say if it's better or not better than the, than the uh, competition. I do know it's a little bit more expensive than the competition by maybe 50 bucks, but from reading on the forums of people who have had both, a lot of people say that with the hybrid shifter, there's a lot more lateral play when it's in gear versus the acuity shifter. I could be wrong, and if I'm wrong about this, let me know down in the comments. I believe the acuity shifter has more range of adjustments than the hybrid shifter. Now, there was a rumor that kind of circulated a while back by some people that were saying that the acuity shifter changed the angle of the uh, shifter cable. Anytime you're gonna shorten a shifter, you're gonna be dropping the, I forgot what the name of it is, but the little ball that goes into the cup, you're gonna be dropping that more, right? To get shorter shifts. Anytime you do that with any shifter, it obviously changes the angle of the shifter cable. The shorter you make the throw, the more angle tweak is gonna be on the cable. And over time, if you shorten something way too much, you can break your shifter cables. Now, from what I've been told by the guys at Acuity, they've made it so that even on its shortest setting, it's not gonna add a whole lot of stress to the shifter cable. So you shouldn't have anything to worry about, especially when it's combined with the shifter cable bushings. Because they're spherical bushings that move like this, um, it allows the shifter cable to move freely, so the added angle on it essentially doesn't even affect it. And I haven't had any issues yet. I don't know if I will, but that's just what I have to report on that. So just from what others have said that they felt like, although the acuity shifter is about 50 bucks more, that you get a lot more for your money. I can't say 100% because I haven't tried the other one yet, but that's just what I've heard. So what are the pros and the cons about this? And would I buy it knowing what I know now? So the pros of it are 100%, you can basically control every aspect of your shifting experience. It doesn't make your car faster, but it will eliminate some, maybe not all, but it definitely eliminates a lot of the problems that we had with the OEM shifter. I don't know if the 2020 shifter still has those issues, but some people were getting lockouts in certain gears. Um, some people have gotten second gear grinds. I can say 100% that anytime I've gotten second gear grind, it was because I didn't have my foot all the way to the floor and I caught myself in the moment. So anytime I make a conscious effort to have my foot all the way to the floor, I never grind second. Um, that's only happened, but with this shifter, it hasn't happened yet, but that might be because I trained my brain to make a conscious effort before I installed it. Um, the next pro is it definitely fixed my fifth to sixth lockout that I was getting. I never go accidentally to fourth gear like I mentioned earlier. The next pro is it's a complete drop-in unit. All you gotta do is torque everything down to spec and put it in there. If you do wanna change it later, you're gonna have to install it where the sides of your center console aren't there so you can tweak it but maybe that's something you wanna do, maybe it's not. Now, the price could be a pro or a con depending on how you look at things and depending on how much money you have and how you view money. I mean, some people might look at this and say, oh, 400 and some odd dollars, that's too much money. Well, if that's the case, then don't buy it. I mean, if it's not worth it to you, it's not worth it to you. In my humble opinion, I definitely feel like it's worth it just because I don't have any of the problems that I had with the stock shifter, and for that, I definitely think it's worth the money. Some of the cons are the break-in period, but that's to be expected with almost any part. But for me, um, you know, at first, I didn't think I was gonna like it. Like I mentioned earlier, when I first installed it, went for a drive, I liked it, but I was like, man, this is kind of annoyingly stiff. And, and fortunately, over time, it definitely loosened up. I'm 100% loving the new shift knob, and I don't mean to knock on Acuity. You know, if you wanna, if you want an insulated shift knob, I mean, Acuity makes those. I just happened to want one that had the core in it, so I could have my, so I could have my gate pattern on there, and also have the color matching. You know, it's been 110, 111 degrees every day, and I left my car out in the sun the other day, got back in, and the shifter actually wasn't even hot with that Delrin cap around it. It's perfect. So 100% love that. So all in all, I'm going to say this. If you're on the fence about whether you want to do a stage one, stage two, or you know the full drop-in unit, if you don't want to buy the full drop-in unit, all you really need is the shifter cable bushings. That's going to give you 88%, I think, of the feel of the complete stage two kits, you know, with the rockers and all that stuff. I think that's the best upgrade that you can get. And you know, when I went from stage one to stage two, 
I didn't really feel like there was that much of a difference in the feel. However, going from stage two to full drop-in, there was a huge difference in the way that it felt in a good way. So with that said, knowing what I know now, I'd 100% buy it again. So, you know, like I mentioned earlier, I'll throw links in the description where you get the shift knob, the tools to install it, and the shifter, if that's something you wanna check out. And then you can also go check out my other videos on the stage one and the stage two upgrades so you can get a better feel for those. But ultimately, let me know what your thoughts are, guys, down in the comments section. Love to hear what you guys have to say about it. But until next time, I love you. You guys stay sexy.